So he says, uh, listen, Hector, he says, uh, you don't know what you're getting into, dude. I said, well, I need you to tell me what I'm getting into. So he said, okay, I'll meet with you. But I couldn't go because I had a warrant for my arrest because I had already kidnapped the doctor. Why did you kidnap the doctor? I kidnapped the doctor because he was a doctor that was running when Kiki was, was uh, basically dying. They brought him in uh, basically to save him. But right. Carlos Quintero would not let him be saved. So they ended up uh, using the doctor to inject lidocaine into his heart to keep his heart beating, wow. which would bring him back to consciousness when he would go unconscious. So when I first took over the murder case, I, I sat down with, uh, with, with, with Charlie over a beer in, in LA and I said, Charlie, and tell me about uh, Kiki's participation in Buffalo. And he said, bro, he said, uh, Hector, says, Kiki had nothing to do with Buffalo. And I said, what are you talking about? Didn't they kill him because of that? He said, uh, Aguas, Aguas, carnal, it's up. Ah. He said, they're lying to you, that's a lie. Ah. I ran, you know, I ran the Buffalo Chihuahua raid. You know, um, I, I ran him with, with uh, Miguel Aldana, the, the guy from Interpol. You, you know him too. We ran the whole thing. Kiki was not even involved in it. Kiki did not participate. The only two DEA officers in Mexico that participated in Buffalo, as you know, was Hermosillo in Mexico City. The Guadalajara DEA office, at which Kiki was assigned, did not participate. And I said, so they're lying to me? They're lying to the world, buddy. He said, they're lying to everybody. I was, heads up, dude. He says, I was out. Something's up with this stuff. You better be careful. Now, after that meeting with that gentleman and you're driving home in the car, what are you thinking, Hector? Well, initially, I'm thinking, what, what, what's going on here? <clears throat> then I find out that, that I, was try I was trying to basically investigate Caro Quintero. And I come to find out that Caro Quintero was flown out of Mexico in a CEA plane flown by a CEA pilot. Uh -huh. when, he, when he was flying to lead to Costa Rica, he was flown out by a CIA pilot by the name of Warner Lutz. And I'm thinking to myself, what is a CEA pilot doing assisting Caro Quintero Flea when we're looking for him for killing Camarena? Excuse me, I'm gonna- Yeah, for sure. <laughs> take a little drink because I'm, I'm get, coughing. Get your money. Mm. Oh, thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. <sighs> So that, that was very mysterious to me. Uh, you, I'm, I'm thinking, well, here I am just starting on the case. My compadre, Charles Lugo, tells me he ran the, the Camarena. I mean, he ran the Buffalo raid. Camarena wasn't involved. I lie. And then I find out that the CIA flew Caro Quintero out of Mexico so he could flee from us. I'm very confused. Now, at this time, the, the Contra thing hadn't hit yet, right? As far as on the news. So explain to the people what was going on down there in Central America at the time with the CIA and the Contras. Well, I did not get educated until actually I found out that there was a, there was a white Anglo-Saxon gentleman working for the Mexican DFS, which is a director of federal security. Now, now give, 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 me, give, give me a second. Yeah, the DFS, what is the DFS in Mexico? The DFS is a Directorate of Federal Security, Dirección Federal de Seguridad, wow. which is Mexico CIA. <laughs> and what caught my attention there is what is an American Anglo doing working for Mexico's DFS? Now, I knew from the beginning that DFS agents had picked up Kiki Camarena and turned him over to the drug lords. So obviously, I'm focused on the, on the, on the DFS because I know they were involved. And then I find out that there's an American guy working for the DFS. Are you kidding me? Wow. So I reached out for the guy. I had already kidnapped my shine by the doctor that had ejected drugs to Camarena. Okay. And I got him on the phone and I said, uh, I said, uh, I need to talk to you. I said, uh, you're, you're working for the DFS. And he says, yes, I am. We're talking in English and I'm talking to this guy in Mexico on the phone. Right. And he says, uh, I don't want to talk to you. I said, listen, sir, you don't have a choice. I want to kidnap your ass. So you pay attention to me. Either you cooperate, or I'm going to bring your ass up here anyway. Right. And you know, I have a reputation of being a very effective kidnapper. Of course, but then I've been all over the news that I kidnapped Dr. Machine. So he says, uh, listen, Hector, he says, uh, you don't know what you're getting into, dude. 
I said, well, I need you to tell me what I'm getting into. So he said, okay, I'll meet with you. But I couldn't go because I had a warrant for my arrest because I had already kidnapped the doctor. Why did you kidnap the doctor? I kidnapped the doctor because he was a doctor that was running when Kiki was, was uh, basically dying. They brought him in uh, basically to save him. But right. Carlos Quintero would not let him be saved. So they ended up uh, using the doctor to inject lidocaine into his heart to keep his heart beating, wow. which would bring him back to consciousness when he would go unconscious because of pain. See, when the body's in a lot of pain, it goes unconscious to protect itself. So when Camarena was going unconscious, this doctor was injecting lidocaine directly into his heart oh, wow. to bring him back to consciousness so they could keep interrogating him. Now, are these tactics that typical Mexican drug lords do to torture people? Uh, Mexican pe people uh, don't, usually don't torture people. Usually they just, well, they do. They do, but usually they just shoot you and kill you. They don't in interrogate you and tape you. So when I knew that Kiki had been interrogated and tape recorded, I figured that this, this was not a drug traffic or drug lord normal uh, assassination. Yeah, but the drug lords will bring you in and they'll, they'll, they'll torture you. And uh, they usually tie you up and they're not very brave guys. They're a bunch of cowards. They're not, they're not big, big matones or big criminals. Uh, well, they're criminals, but they're not uh, courageous guys. They're a bunch of sissies. They only kill people when they're tied up or shooting behind the back. So how did you get the doctor over here to the States? The, I kidnapped the, him. How did you kidnap him? Did you go there and get a car and just pick him up? No, I got some people to, to basically surround his clinic and go in there and gump on him, get him up, bring him up with a hair, put him in a plane and put him to wow. me. And I, 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 wow. I got him. I, I received him here in El Paso. You had a, a warrant in Mexico for the kidnapping, right? Well, of course, they issued a warrant for my arrest for, for kidnapping and also for violating Mexican sovereignty. Have you been back to Mexico since? No, I don't. Do you still have that warrant open over there? No, as a matter of fact, uh, the reason I'm speaking now and I, can, and I can bring the truth to the American public is because uh, in 2013, my warrant for kidnapping in Mexico expired. I'm no longer wanted in Mexico.